Yo, it's the exam coach checking in with you with another podcast episode. This one, it's going to be about key exam skills that enable you to do well in exams. It's a little bit of a spin off of one of the uh, YouTube videos I've recently done. Three skills you need to pass any exam in that video on YouTube. I've linked it in the podcast description below. I talked about organization revision techniques, and strong exam technique. Those being the key skills you need to pass any exam. In this podcast, I'm going to add a bit of color to those, go into them on a little more in a little more detail. And importantly, I'm, I'm actually going to give you some concrete ways, things that you can do immediately after you've listened to this podcast, soaked all that information up like a sponge. Importantly, you can go and execute. You can go and get stuff done because the big thing about the Exam Coach podcast, I hope for you guys, is yeah, you you listen to the theory, you maybe get excited about new things that I highlight in terms of how you can work more efficiently or plan your your day better or just approach your exams in a way that's a little bit more tried and tested than just going in cold, but also doing it actually implementing it and and that is so it's so underestimated doing i think if there was one skill that i think i i would value above anything else is the ability to just do stuff to get stuff done it's it's unbelievably valuable especially today when there's there's a lot of distractions a lot of alternatives a lot of options and just being able to be single minded and do stuff is a big thing so after this podcast remember deeds not words think about the small things you can do Hopefully I'll give you a few today that you can just smash straight up after this and get the ball rolling. So let's get cracking. The first skill that is going to help you do well in exams is organization. But let, let's go into a bit more detail on that. In, in the video, I talked about long term and short term planning. So really understanding what's happening over perhaps a six month period. That is what there is that you actually need to do. So, for example, if you're doing uh, a set of exams, what subjects, what modules? And then the second question really is how much of it is there to do? So first is identifying what it is. Second is identifying the quantity of it, because then that will give you a good idea of, OK, how do I actually chunk this up? And that's what we're trying to do when we organize, really, is take something that's complicated and break it down so we can we can chip away at it day by day and make progress. Because that's essentially how every big task has, has many, many different levers and buttons you've got to push in order to slowly make progress towards it. You're not just going to have one good day. It's a bit like saying, I want to get fit and healthy. So you go to the gym for seven hours in one day and that's your week of workouts done. That's not going to be as, as effective if you go as effective as if you go for one hour a day for seven days spacing stuff out gives you a more sustainable and consistent way of actually making progress on the task so the first thing long term think about it get clear about what actually needs to be done and then there's the short term aspect of things being deliberate about what you do day to day and an interesting thing for me here is I always think about the working week, the seven days of the working week. I think a lot of people can, you know, think about that in, in a number of ways, some that are positive, some that are negative. So, for example, the working week, often five days on, two days off, set up, sometimes makes us get stuck in short term loops of seven days where we don't actually sustain momentum week over week rather we let's say hit monday we're a bit groggy because we've had a big weekend tuesday wednesday we kind of hit our stride thursday we're kind of scaling and uh, sorry winding down towards the weekend <laughs> i was gonna say scaling up but we are we are winding down on a thursday friday we get a little bit excited because it's the weekend um and the momentum's definitely pitter pattering off on the work and then it's the weekend you got loose and that whole cycle where if you look at it you've not really picked up any 
significant momentum in that week. You've never really hit your stride, perhaps on a Wednesday, if you want to be kind to yourself. But I know that I definitely, especially when I was working in London a lot, and the rhythms and of the city and, and the work-life balance, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, in the city, obviously you're working very hard. So you, you are working long hours and you often want to use the weekend to just, you know, have, have cut loose, have a good time. And you'll get in that cycle of often only hitting full speed momentum in the middle of the week. And that really is something that for exams, you want to be aware of, but try and just make it so that on a Monday you hit the ground running. And to do that, organization and planning is going to be helpful. So just teeing yourself up on the short term, for example, planning your week on a Sunday night is very, very important. Doing things on a weekend that perhaps doesn't suck all the energy out of you, but still gives you a little bit of get up and go when you hit the week and then accelerating all the way through to the end. So last thing on Friday, you're actually still working 100%. And, and just being organized by planning your days out and understanding that concept of the seven day cycle and, and not getting lulled into short term loops where you don't get much momentum up, but trying to sustain it over a long period of time is, is hopefully going to help you out with your exam preparation because you realize you've got to be trying to build a, a snowball of momentum rather than just trying to piece everything together every week and, and not really gaining any, uh, well, momentum really. It's That's what it's all about. This is it's momentum. It's making sure you put yourself in a position to continue where you left off from the week after. Okay, so let's talk about some practical things you can do just to be more organized, just some basic stuff that you can do right now while you're listening to this podcast to get more organized. The first thing you can do is just download a calendar app. It doesn't matter which one. I prefer Google Calendar just because it integrates with a lot of different things. And just get using it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think there's a quote that goes, perfect is the enemy of good because when you're trying to be perfect the whole time often you don't even get started with this calendar app you don't need to worry about the color coding or making everything perfect kind of quarter past the hour time slots if, if you're going to really break things up in in detail rather just use it to roughly chunk up the time of your day and this is going to be really helpful because i think one of the things i find really helpful is i try to look at my day uh in terms of Number one, two halves of the day. So midday really is that middle point where I try and take a half time break and look at what's gone well. What can I improve? How do I really make the most out of this next six hours of the day, seven hours of the day that I've got left to do some work in? And the next thing is you can break it down even further into quarters and then maybe hours. And again, by chunking all this time up, you're really trying to see how you can make the most of it and seeing the day, in fact, as a, a series of sprints and something that really should be taken full advantage of. The other mental model you might want to think about is the Russian doll time model. I've just made that up, but for me, it really helps me think about units of time. So for example, you have a year, that's kind of the outer shell of the Russian doll. And then within the year, you, you pop open the Russian doll. Russian doll is like the, uh, it's difficult to explain it in a voice, but it's uh, essentially a doll. I'm assuming made in Russia and you open it up and then there's a smaller doll inside. You open up that smaller doll. There's a smaller doll than that smaller doll inside and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then finally you get one that doesn't open up that you try and when I was a kid, used to just, uh, it was a bit like a squirrel. You used to crack, try and crack it on a table, but it never, it never cracked. Obviously I chewed them as well occasionally, but then mum got a bit annoyed because you know, choking hazard, all that stuff. But luckily I got through it because so, I'm here today and use that analogy to think about time. So you've got the year, the big Russian doll, you open up the year, you've got the months, you open up the months, you've got the weeks, you open up the weeks, you've got the days, you open, you open up the days, you've got the hours, you know, you open up the hours, you've got the minutes, you open up the minutes, you've got the seconds, you open up the seconds, you've got the milliseconds and so on and so on. If you get out to milliseconds, you, you really don't need to be thinking about that. That's a little bit too granular. I know we're trying to get good here, but milliseconds, we, we can leave them alone. The key thing is just thinking about time in that way really makes you think, okay, how can I use these different units of time? How can I really break this down so that during this hour, I'm focusing 100% on this particular task and trying to compartmentalize your day in that way so you can get lots of different things done. You can touch a lot of different stuff. You can keep stuff fresh and interesting. And yeah, there will be tasks that require you to take a few more units of time up because it requires a deeper level of thinking. And that's fine. But I think the variety in a day really helps. So having a bit of 
for example, I just like to do some exercise every day. I like to you know, take a couple of breaks and just enjoy a break and use that as a purposeful activity. And it's 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 deliberate. That's the key thing I'm trying to get across here. Uh, the, the working sessions, making sure they're targeted and focused because when you have a good one, you feel good about it. And it's that momentum, again, building up that momentum because you're doing stuff that you intend to do and you're doing it well. The next thing I'd say about organization, especially for exams, invest in the tools, guys. Like the amount of people I see who just don't have folders or file dividers or the basic things you need just to keep your the tools to keep yourself organized. It's so important. And I know these cost money, but really you've got to look at this, uh, and I don't know what your financial situation is, but you've got to look at it as an investment in your future. This stuff is going to allow you to achieve the grades. It's going to allow you to do X, Y, and Z down the line that you want to achieve. It's going to open up doors for you. So whatever way you can, you've, you've got to try and get your hands on the right tools, whether it's asking the school, whether it's buying them yourself, anything you can do. And it, it really, you know, in the grand scheme of thing does not things does not cost much. Again, I don't know your financial situation. If you need to make sacrifices to do this, I'm empathetic to that. But I would encourage you to make those sacrifices and get get those file dividers and get those folders in the pens, the, the things that are going to really help you chunk up your work, understand it in the macro sense, your subject folders and the micro sense, the topics in the subjects, the different details within the within the within the topics and making sure you're really on top of, of what there is to learn this year because essentially that exams are all about understanding what the exam's about and then having put the work in so you can answer the questions in detail. The next thing I'd say is at school, there is a, at least when I was at school, when I'm, a lot of things that happen at school, they, they carry through generations. It's not, you know, things don't, don't change too much. Yeah. The environment around us does a bit. So, for example, there was a lot more smartphones around now than when I was at school. But there was still there was still a fair few. They've just become a, a lot more popular and they're a lot more integrated into our lives now. But one thing I, I would like you to to pay attention to is the culture at school of perhaps being sloppy and disorganized and it being cool. I bought into this culture, especially around the age of thirteen to fifteen. You know, you you do get a little bit stroppy, maybe, and I was definitely a, a bit of a stroppy teenager, and I thought it was often cool to disagree with the sake of the status quo, not necessarily because I disagreed with it, but just for the sake of disagreeing. That's how difficult I could be. And, and the same thing with being on point, being keen, being interested, being organized, being tidy and smart. It was almost a rebellious streak that I had where I almost del deliberately didn't do this because I thought that was the cool thing to do. A lot of other people who I considered to be cool did that. So I kind of copied it. And yeah, you get a bit of kudos for it off your, off your pals. Uh, but really, the one question I'd get you to ask yourself is, do I actually want to do this or am I doing this because I've been given that impression by other people? And I've adopted it because that's just what's in front of me at the moment. That's the culture within my group of friends in my school. I'd ask you to question that and think about what's actually best for you and what do you want to be 10 years from now? What kind of behaviors do you have to cultivate in yourself to be that thing? Sweet. Next point, active or well, active recall is part of it. The next point is actually revision techniques, using the ones that actually work. Those are, I repeat them often, active recall and spaced repetition. So if you haven't actually seen any of my stuff on active recall and spaced repetition, essentially a brief explanation of, of what these two techniques are. They, they work together and they are proven by science to be the most effective ways to learn information for exams. So active recall is essentially testing yourself. That's all it is. There's many different ways to test yourself, but as a principle, it is just testing yourself, writing notes on a subject, perhaps highlighting a few, if you want writing notes, rereading them and highlighting tend to be the three that are the most well-known revision techniques, but just because they're the most intuitive and well-known does not mean they're the most effective. And the science again has, has gone on to prove this. I've, I've actually done another video, uh, on, on that it's uh, scientific revision techniques, seven of them. In fact, it's on my YouTube as well. And 
the the art of being able to just give yourself a quick test after you've done your notes after you've done your highlighting and, and maybe a little quick reread is it's making your brain work it's making your brain actively try and recall this information and through that that is where all the learning and memory actually happens when you push yourself a bit when you've almost almost forgetting as part of space repetition which i'm about to move on to but this key thing of just making your brain work during active, active recall is important for you to understand the space repetition piece is when we first look at something, we forget it uh, fairly quickly afterwards. So there's this this graph that I show on one of one of the videos called the forgetting curve, where essentially over time you will forget information if you don't ref refresh it. And one of the ways of combating that is you want to, after you've looked at something, taken notes on it and tested yourself via active recall, maybe the day after you want to do another test to refresh that information fairly soon after because you're likely to forget a lot of it you'll remember a bit more information because you've interrupted the forgetting curve but you still won't remember all of it and then perhaps two days later you do another refresh test and you remember a little bit more you've interrupted the forgetting curve it's going to take you longer to forget that information and then maybe four or five days after that gradually spacing out these repetitions further and further apart as you become more familiar with the information, thus making room for more information and new topics to come in to your schedule, but still not forgetting the stuff that you've revised way back in the beginning of your, your active recall spaced repetition program, if you want to call it that. So those are the two techniques. Let's talk about how you can actually do them on a day-to-day -day basis. Active recall, the best thing about this technique is it's very fluid. Testing yourself is, it, it can be done anywhere. It can be done inside your head. It can be done by just writing down perhaps five vocab words on your phone and trying to answer them throughout the day as you go about your business. Perhaps you answer a couple of text messages and then have a look at those five words and try and answer them without having anything in front of you. And this micro testing every day using your smartphone is, is going to be so effective because it will stack up over time and you will be amazed at how much you've actually covered just because every day you chipped away a bit. Imagine, for example, how many times you, te you check text messages a day. If you, every time you open your phone, made a commitment to just have a quick look at some, some pre-organized questions or test questions that you'd made in a notes app on your phone, that would be an amazing habit to build. Perhaps you do it every day on the way in from school and every day on the way back unbelievable habit to build to just keep that information flowing through your brain and doing the reps required to actually remember this stuff for the exams so there's your challenge foreign language vocab that could be a great way to start it because often just vocabulary translations are easy things to test yourself on because it's just one word in exchange for another and then obviously you want to make sure you relate that to how it's actually going to be implemented in the exam which is what i'm going to talk about next exam technique important third and final exam skill that I mentioned. So it can really be broken down into to two things, your mindset, your ability to stay cool and calm in the pressurized situation and environment of an exam, and also the idea that you need to get really good at understanding the papers and what they actually want you to do. So the first thing I'd say is you got to get your hands on past papers. I get a lot of questions on Snapchat and WhatsApp saying, hey, how do I get my hands on the past papers? Guys, Google, use it. Type stuff in. Use, the, use your initiative. Think about it. What exams are you doing? What's the name of them? What subjects are you doing? What's the name of them? What exam boards are those subjects examined under? Type those three things in to Google and the past paper is going to come up or the mark scheme is going to come up. Go to their website, download it, have a look at it. Really, really important that you get your hands on these because... You're understanding the whole objective of this exam exercise. I like to use the uh, expression or idea of starting with where you're actually going to finish. So a lot of people, when they do exams, they just start with the information, the questions, the syllabus, the actually they don't even they don't even start with the questions. They start with the text out of the textbook, the explanation of things. The best students, or the smartest students, what they tend to do is they look at what they are actually going to be answering in the first place. So they look at the exam questions, they look at even the mark scheme, the answers to the questions, and think, right, if that's the end point, what do I need to do to get myself in a position where I can produce those kinds of answers? So instead of working forward and kind of feeling your way out through the through the dark corridor where there's there's no light and you, you're making mistakes and doubling back on yourself and 
everything's a bit more difficult when you start from the textbook, you know where you're going when you look at the answer in the, in the past paper. You just need to work your way back from it and figure out, okay, if this is the, if this is the answer, this is the question, what do I need to revise? What, what is the, what's the topic in the question? Okay, let me flick to that topic page in my revision guide. Let's take notes on that topic page. Let's look at the key terminology that's on the mark scheme. If that's on the, the revision page that I'm taking notes on, let's highlight that or put a ring around it so I understand I need to remember that because the examiner's put a tick next to that in the exam. So if I mention that, I'm going to get a mark. And then you take notes on it. Bulleted notes, pulling out those key points, and then you test yourself, maybe looking at the past paper question again. Then you try and write out the bullets, bullets in response to that question, constantly testing yourself. Then you space out your repetitions a bit in case you didn't remember it first time and to make sure that you do actually remember it long term. And that's the cycle right there. Understanding from the outset what you're actually trying to do. Really, really important that, that you guys maybe try that out or at least think about different ways of approaching the information within the context of what you're going to actually be doing at the end of this process, which is taking an exam in order to try and find the best way to do things. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. I've tried to give you just five, maybe six things there that you could go away and do. Take your pick over which you want to do. The most important thing is just do it, get it done, get involved. If you haven't done anything or you're not, you're not a do, I, I know how you feel. And it's, it's tough because you just you feel like you can't get any momentum up and you're not used to having structure to your day and actually holding yourself to account and taking responsibility. I really struggled with this when I was a bit younger and I, my only piece of advice is you just got to start small. So if this podcast can help you just at least do one thing when you get home today or when you get in the classroom today to, to just be positive and try and get some momentum going and... I, I just want to mention this because I know you might be thinking this is you think you're so far behind because there's a lot of people who are a lot further ahead than you and perhaps you're not doing that well in class. You do find stuff difficult. You don't know what's going on because you haven't listened, listened for half the year. Your attention's been all over the place. You just have to start now. Start sometime soon because if you don't get started, you're never going to get there. Think about it that way. And if you get started now, at least you're going to try and make an effort at it and you do stand a chance you've always got a fighting chance with exams always and if you plan ahead enough you've got a very good chance to do well and and really there's a finite amount of information here. that's why i also love exams it's a finite amount if you learn that if you understand it you will do well it's not impossible you can do well in these things great so if you're uh if, you, if you're checking out now i'd love it if uh, you gave the podcast a a like or a rating on whatever channel you're you're listening to this on it all helps get the get the word out there get uh, people on board with the exam coach and yeah if you have any questions let me know i'm always available on snapchat whatsapp also if you want to join the bulletin check out the website there's the whatsapp bulletin there it's what i send out once or twice a week it's a summary of all the best exam coach content plus a couple of tips in there that i try and add a bit more value to you with and Check out the uh, the blog as well on the website. It's it's uh, getting built up slowly, but I'm hoping that by the time exams come around in mid to early 2019, the the blog's in in ship shape and and ready to actually help some people out with uh, some really good explanations on ways that they can get started with their revision and do well in their exams. Awesome! Thanks very much, guys. I really appreciate your time, and have a cracking day. <laughs>